Thank you once more, but today we tell it to the legislature that within the three words of the National Defense Pact, signs between Liberia and Guinea and in the spirit of African solidarity, the Revolutionary Republic of Guinea has sent a contingent of soldiers to cooperate with the Liberian armed forces in continuing the crisis of the weekend violent demonstrations and maintaining peace and order to secure life and property. The President said that a fully equipped contingent of the Guinean armed forces arrived this morning and was available for assistance if the need arises. Addressing the joint session of the House of Representatives and the Senate, who reconvened following a short recess this morning, President Trump also disclosed that the Ivorian head of state, Felix Kufu-Bonyu, has also offered his support as an expression of solidarity, unity, and friendship with the Liberian people. The President of Togo, Mr. Mansingbe Iadema, has also offered his assistance and support, Dr. Talbot added. On the local front, the Chief Executive noted that messages have come from all counties, organizations, militiamen, citizens, and groups indicating their commitment to fully participate in maintaining security and protecting life and property. While mentioning the disaster, the weekend incident had resulted into, the President said, with self-confidence and determination, government and the people will rapidly reconstruct the economy and regain their national stature. The President emphasized, at the same time, that the curfew imposed in Monrovia from 6 in the evening to 6 in the morning will be fully enforced until otherwise declared, and any unauthorized persons found on the streets during this period will be promptly arrested. Prior to the special message of the President to the Legislature, the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Dr. Richard E. Hennings, informed members of the House that because of the civil disturbances in the city, they have to cut short their research to return to the seat of government. Responding to Speaker Hennings, the first Deputy Speaker of the House, H. Cecil Williamson Jr., said that the people from the political subdivisions of the country regret the disturbances. The Vice President of Liberia and President of the Liberian Senate, Benedi Rana, also informed the Senate of the situation that necessitated their return to the seat of government. More no messages and telegrams from Liberians in and outside the country deploring the civil disturbance at the weekend have continued to pour into the Chief Executive's office of the mansion here, according to the President's Senior Post Secretary. In one message from Gangjida County Superintendent Tiku Dajaro, who described the situation as bad news and assured the President that appropriate measures were being taken in his county and that concerned authorities have been contacted to make sure that no one crossed the borders from that county. From Grand Bassa County, Superintendent Joseph Bagu and his people pledged their complete support and loyalty to the Talbot administration. Ambassador James B. Freeman in East Africa told the Chief Executive that he had known with shock and disbelief the unfortunate event which occurred in the capital recently seriously disrupting the peace of the Liberian society. He told President Talbot, in this hour of national tragedy, my staff joins me in sharing with you and the affected families the grief and pain we feel over the deaths of some of their precious and promising citizens. In the middle of the Grand Chief Templar of the ROG team, most worshipful brother Matilda A. B. Shield said that as a fraternal body, his organization deeply regrets, repair, and denounce the unlawful acts and vandalism which occurred in our peaceful and stable country by a handful of bad and wicked men who are the instigators of the whole ugly affair. We pray that the Almighty God will strengthen the president and give him more courage during these days of sinfulness and ugliness in the country. In another message from Superintendent Thomas M. Barna and the chairman of the local tree party of Lifter County, Thomas Kelly, the citizens and partisans of that county said they heard with dismay and disappointment with the demonstration which was staged in the capital by three malicious and unscrupulous enemies of the state which resulted into injuries and damage of property. The message said, we the leaders and citizens of Lifter County completely dissociate ourselves with this malicious act and we want to assure you, Mr. President, of our continuous loyalty to you and your administration and to further assure you that we will do everything within our power 
to maintain peace and stability in our country. From Simon County, Senator and Mrs. Harris V. Grisby said it was very regrettable that at a time of this, when huge preparations are being made for hosting the OU, narrow minded and the base citizens should attempt to upset all efforts towards a successful outcome of this event for the efforts will not succeed. From the capital, this is what the president had to say. Demonstrating your solidarity and fraternity with our government and people in this era of national crisis, our friend and brother, President and Secretary of our neighboring sister state, the People's Revolutionary Republic of Germany, speedily dispatched to us on Sunday morning, the 15th instant, a very clear delegation headed by his excellency, Dominic Kamara, Speaker of the National Assembly and member of the political bureau, and conveyed to us a certain message expressing solidarity with the government, the Kurdish party, and the people of Liberia and myself. Those who are concerned over the Syrian situation, President Syria offered us such military and other assistance as we may need during violent demonstrations. The President visited Camp Johnson Road, Broad, Randall, Benson, and Gallo Street, Detroit Island, and the waterfront in the capital, Belfast. Some of the Liberian and foreign businessmen whom the President met during his sightseeing tour this evening expressed regrets over the weekend looting and other damages. They told the President that they would continue to support and cooperate with the government in building a better Liberia and uplifting the living standard of the Liberian people. The President said he was very sorry for what had happened and he reassured the businessmen of government's full protection. There has been no official estimate of the total cost of damage, but it is believed that the looting and damage in Manuvia of almost all the big business centers, few small shops, and all the international airline offices, as well as the Broad Street office of all ideas, could cost several million dollars. Looters got away with cash, checks, food, drinks, clothes, shoes, jewelry, important documents, and they smashed the windows and windshields of many of the looters throughout the city. Meanwhile, the Ministry of Commerce, Industry, and Transportation has assured the consuming public that stores, some strategic stores, will be open tomorrow to make need for needed commodities to the public. The Army Chief of Staff, General Henry K. Johnson, has denied that the Director of Police, Mr. Ronnie E. Johnson, shot and killed an Army officer. In a statement made over nationwide radio and television, General Johnson pointed out that it was the intention of those vicious and wicked people who have caused disturbances in our country to spread false rumors which are bent on dividing the public and confusing the Liberian people. He added that it was incumbent upon him to inform the public that these evil-minded people are pursuing these tactics to bring about greater destruction, disunity, and disharmony among the officers and men and women of the army and police. He explained that at this critical time in the history of the country, it is necessary to guard against these forces of mischief. Concluding, the Army Chief of Staff noted that the army and police at this stage have no recourse but to direct all energies toward the restoration of law and order in the country in the task of preserving the nation's heritage, its peaceful atmosphere, and security for the Liberian people. The Monrovia City Council today held a special call meeting in an effort to restore the general appearance of the city of Monrovia. Addressing the special session, Mr. Francis Horton, Chairman of the City Council, challenged the City Council to meet the recent event which occurred over the weekend with a new sense of awareness. He further called on the Council to continue to be responsive to the realities and collectively tackle the present state of affairs of the city with oneness and concerted efforts. Chairman Martin assured the central government and the mayor of the Council's support and cooperation in bringing economic and social activities of the city to standard, in addition to cooperating in the massive cleanup campaign being undertaken. The entire special session centered around discussing the condition of the city. 
According to the spokesman of the corporation, recommendations and pertinent solutions were made in an effort to normalize the peace and security of the city of Monrovia. Carnegie University College in Swakopee-Bung County has been temporarily closed until further notice. According to our correspondent, a memorandum issued to the faculty, staff, and student body of the college by Dr. Stephen Nicholson, Dean of Academic Affairs, noted that the institution has been closed in view of the recent situation in Monrovia. The memorandum pointed out that because of the uncertainty to ensure adequate provision of food and other basic necessities needed for the fleet operation of the college has prompted its temporary closure. This broadcast is coming to you from ERBC Monrovia. The Organization of African Unity today described the current elections in Rhodesia as a mockery of democratic processes because they were not taking place in a free and fair atmosphere. You have called upon the international community to disregard any outcome of the elections which are based on a constitution in which the white minority still retains control of the country. It added that the struggle in Zimbabwe was for genuine independence, where the black majority would hold real power and not the fake of their power. Zambia said it would continue to back nationalist movement despite intimidation and destruction of life and property. President Kaunda has reiterated his country's commitment to the liberation struggle in southern Africa. And the news, we look at the main points once again. President Corbett today reported to the legislature that within the framework of the mutual defense pact agreed between Liberia and the Revolutionary Republic of Guinea, and in the spirit of African solidarity, the rarely put contingent of Guinean soldiers have arrived in Liberia to cooperate with the Liberian armed forces in securing life and property. The president, who was addressing a joint session of the legislature at the Capitol this morning, said if the need arises, this contingent of soldiers will cooperate with the Liberian armed forces to maintain law and order, adding that support and assistance have also been offered by the Africans and Togo. The Monrovia City Council has begun a program to restore the general appearance of Monrovia. The OAU has described the present elections in Rhodesia as a mockery of democratic processes. And that is the end of the news from Monrovia. <laughs> Stationary ABC broadcasting to you from Minerva, Liberia. That was Ivan Fest with our late edition of the news. Our last newscast, a morning summary, can be heard at 12 o'clock and that's at midnight tonight. <laughs>